All right, so we are recording this session so that we can post on our YouTube channel uh, later on for you to catch up and refresh any of the information if you need to. Uh, but once again, you're muted throughout this presentation. The group chat is turned off so you can message me if you have any questions. And uh, we're glad to have you tonight, all 74 of us. So welcome to our first virtual orientation, Road to the Hill session for the summer, uh, entitled Welcome to the Hill. My name is Matthew Zielinski. I serve as the Director of New Student and Transition Programs here at Seton Hill. I get to work with amazing faculty, staff, administration, and some student leaders here as well to put on all the virtual orientation sessions and other initiatives aimed at helping our new students and families uh, adjust to life at Seton Hill. So it's, it's good to have you tonight. Um, we're gonna start things off. I'm gonna turn it over to the president of Seton Hill University, Dr. Mary Finger with a welcome. Hi all, I'm uh, thrilled to be here tonight and so happy that you are all here as well. And we are, we cannot be happier to welcome you as Griffins to Seton Hill University. Now, Seton Hill is a really remarkable place, but you'll get to know as soon as you, as soon as you step foot on campus as a, as a, as a student. Um, it's a beautiful community, a wonderful community of people who really support each other and want the absolute best for you um, in academics, in your co-curricular life, athletics, in student government, in student clubs. Uh, in terms of the performances, if you are a visual performing arts major, uh, you will find that your faculty and the staff here at Seton Hill are here for you and are here to make sure that you have a successful experience. So my advice to you, uh, we are certainly working really hard to make sure, you know, you've had a interesting year, 18 months, as we all have with the pandemic, and we are working to make sure that there's a return to normalcy in the fall. And that means in terms of, you know, classes, face-to-face -face classes, which we've had for the last year, uh, but also activities, athletics, um, and you know, just hanging out and being together. And so that's our commitment to you for the fall, to have the most normal experience that we can possibly as we can possibly have. And we want you to have the best college experience you can have. Um, so my, my, my advice is take advantage of everything. Make sure that if, you, you, if there's something you don't understand, there's always someone who can help you with that. You're gonna hear from a lot of great people tonight. And so you'll have them as touchstones, uh, but you're not gonna be able to take it all in because there's a lot of information. So just ask the questions. Um, and just keep asking. Every Our job here is to make sure that you have a wonderful experience at Seton Hill and graduate and go on to, you know, to whatever it is you want to do in, in your future. And uh, so we, we're pretty good at doing that and we're excellent at doing that. And we want to make sure that you um, it, it are able to take advantage of absolutely everything. I have an open door policy. I'm on the third floor of admin. You ever have problems or your parents want to talk to me, um, you just uh, ask, I'm on, in 311 on, uh, in, in uh, the administration building. So happy to answer any questions or just stop by and say hi. So welcome, we're, we're glad you're here. We're thrilled you're here. Can't wait to see you in August. Take care. Thank you, President Finger. We appreciate your time with us today. We know that you have many obligations, so have a good night. Uh, hopefully you can avoid the storm and, uh, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Next, I will turn things over to Sister Maureen O'Brien, our Vice President for Mission Identity, who is going to start us with a prayer. Good evening. I offer this prayer for each one of you who are with us this evening. And we pray that God will help you as you begin this new adventure in your lives, that God will allow you to experience presence in the many blessings that are put before you, that your eyes will be open to new challenges and exciting opportunities that your Seton Hill experience will bring to you. That your hearts and minds will be open to new friends and to new people who will become a very special part of your life. May you be, have generous spirits to be enthusiastic with your studies, 
encouraged to accept new opportunities to serve others. May you be grateful for those who will help you in this transition and be open to the goodness in each person that you meet. May you do your best so that you will meet the challenges to, in the words of Elizabeth Seton, transform that world in which you are destined to live and to serve others. Amen. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. So as Matt uh, said, I serve in the Office of Mission and Identity. I think by now all of you have received uh, a packet of wonderful gifts and information to welcome you and to introduce you to Seton Hill. And one of the things that you received is well the Catholic identity brochure, which helps you uh, understand when we say that we are an institution that is committed to living our mission. We live that mission by practicing the four pillars of our identity. And the very first pillar, which is probably one of the most significant and one which you may have already experienced is the pillar of welcoming. You are welcomed into this community where you'll meet new friends, new teammates, new faculty, staff, and each one of us will be here to welcome you. At Seton Hill, everyone is welcome. No one is excluded from our community. As one of our graduates pointed out rather poignantly, he said, whether you're Catholic, Methodist, Shinto, or you're questioning the meaning of life, and many of us are doing that right now, we're questioning life's meaning, especially during these days of COVID. The Seton Hill community will welcome, inspire, and fully support you in designing a future to enhance your life. If you've already visited us, I think you have captured and been captured by that welcoming spirit that is so much a part of Seton Hill. The second pillar is the pillar of learning. Now we know you're coming here to get a really great solid education and you will, you will receive that, but you will receive as much as you put into the educational process. Again, lots and lots of opportunities to learn. And sometimes the greatest lessons that you learn and the most significant lessons that you'll learn will be outside the classroom. As you live in the residence halls, interacting with, with other students, learning what it means to be a team. Learning will always be a part of your everyday experience. We're also a community that celebrates and we celebrate learning. This is just one picture of a, an event that took place in our chapel at Seton Hill. It was our opening liturgy, and we celebrate our opening liturgy at the beginning of each year. And hopefully this year we'll be able to do it together in person. We also, the first weekend that you're here, we'll celebrate Mass on the Grass where we just sit on the lawn and celebrate the beginning of this new experience in your life and the new, a new semester in the life of our community. One of the most distinguishing pillars of our identity as a community here at Seton Hill is the pillar of serving. Serving 
is a way in which we articulate and share the gifts that are ours. We have two wonderful all-campus opportunities to serve many different agencies throughout the Greensburg area and even into to the Pittsburgh area. Students find these experiences to be transformational as they reach out to serve others, to serve those that are most in need. When they come back to campus after having experienced a day of service, they take time to reflect upon ways that they have been transformed by reaching out and working with and for others. And I'm sure that in your high school experience, you've had lots of opportunities to practice the pillar of service. Let it be a part of your life here at Seton Hill because it helps us all to understand and to create a community of care, of love, and of service, not only to each other, but to the greater Greensburg, Pittsburgh community. The motto of Seton Hill is hazard yet forward. And during this time of pandemic, we have learned as faculty, as staff, as students, what it really means to hazard and yet to move forward. We opened our campus first semester in a face-to-face -face environment. We have learned that we can celebrate community even when we wear a mask because community is greater than the masks that we wear. It's greater than the social distance. It overcomes social distance and helps us to hazard into a future where welcoming, celebrating, learning, and serving are not just words in a brochure, but realities in each of our lives. So I look forward to meeting you in person when you come for Welcome Weekend. The mission and identity staff consists of our chaplain, Monsignor Statnick, the director of campus ministry, Tony Krzmarczyk, and the director of service experience, Marissa Haynes. Now we'll be inviting you to join us to join the staff for Mission Monday uh, on Monday, July 26th from six into seven. I've just given you a brief overview. On that evening, the entire staff will join me to explain their role in the Office of Mission Identity and what they do each day to transform the lives of our students and to help each one of you to be fit for the world. So thank you so much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Melissa Alsing, who is the Chief Information Officer at Seton Hill. And she will answer all your questions on the wonders of technology. So Melissa, take it away. Thanks, Sister Mo. Um, on behalf of the information technology staff, uh, welcome to the Hill. My name is Melissa Alsing. I'm the Chief Information Officer, which means I lead our technology group at Seton Hill. So let's briefly cover just a few important items to get started with um, that, that you are actually already have access to. Um, all of our deposited students, which is all of you now, have setonhill.edu accounts. So this is your Seton Hill account, which gives you access to email, uh, my.setonhill.edu and a number of other resources you'll need as you start classes on the Hill and get ready um, um, to, to, to come to campus. Um, so make sure that you've activated your account by going to my.setonhill.edu and clicking activate account. 
Once it's activated, you'll be directed to my shoe and prompted to complete some new student forms to make sure that we have all of your contact and enrollment information accurate before you start classes. And then when you've completed your new forms, you'll be asked to submit your shipping address and information to receive your MacBook. Um, if you have any problems along the way, please contact our Solution Center at support.seatonhill.edu. .seaton um, two things to point out on the My Shoe homepage, which is where you'll land um, from my.seatonhill.edu. There's a My Account tab um, under your name on the left, where you'll find some general information, including your ID number, and you'll have access to update and review your account security questions and to update your emergency and, and FERPA contacts. And on the far right side in the corner, there's an icon that looks like a dice or a little Rubik's cube. You'll have access to other Seton Hill resources such as Canvas, our learning management system, your Google account and Shine, our campus event system, among some other items. Going forward, it's going to be really important for you to continue to check your Seton Hill email and to log on to my shoe regularly as any future communications will come to your new Seton Hill account. As all of you likely know, we do issue a MacBook Air to incoming traditional students. And the MacBook that you receive is the 13 inch with 16 gigs of memory and 512 gig hard drives. We're a G Suite for education school. So we encourage you to utilize the unlimited storage there and sync your documents and important materials and information to your Google Drive in case something happens to your laptop. In your admissions welcome packet that that you should have received, there's an insert that looks like the one on the slide and it walks you through the process of receiving your MacBook. You can scan that QR code to link to our new student guide and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions for registering your shipping address uh, for that MacBook. For quick shipping, please check my shoe regularly. Once you've given us your shipping address, we'll also need you to sign off on your equipment contract before we put your MacBook in the mail to you. We hope to start shipping by the middle of June, so the sooner you check in with your shipping address and sign off on your contract, the sooner you'll receive your MacBook. And just a hint, you can do that now by entering your shipping address, and then within a few days you should get access to your contract, and then we'll be shipping those out and you'll be first in line. Um, once we have your address, um, you'll and you've signed off on your contract, you will get a tracking number via email so that you can watch for your MacBook to arrive. And when your shoe box arrives with your MacBook in it, please log in and verify the asset ID for us to make sure that we have everything assigned correctly. This fall during welcome weekend, we'll also be holding a sticker challenge. So the challenge will be some, some more learning about technology and you should look for information in your welcome weekend um, materials that you receive. But if you earn all of your stickers, you can enter a drawing to win an Amazon gift card. Um, a little more about that information about that MacBook. We do um, have insurance and we also have Apple Care on all of your MacBooks. So the Apple Care warranty is for four years. And then the insurance is the entire time that you are with us as a student. The policy will cover any kind of accidental damage um, with a $250 deductible that's charged to your student account. And if your MacBook should need some type of a repair and need sent out, then we issue you a loaner MacBook so you're never without a computer. If something should happen, make sure you stop into the Solution Center for help. Seton Hill also provides all students with a $25 per semester print credit, which equates to roughly 500 black and white pages or 100 color pages. There are printers in many of the public spaces across campus, including both the classroom buildings and the residence halls. The print center is also available if you need to print large jobs or on some type of specialty paper. There really isn't a need for you to bring a printer to campus since we do have this print quota and we have printers readily available. But if you do, you'll have to have it directly wired to your computer. We don't allow for personal printers to connect to our network for security reasons. For those of you who may decide that you want to bring your smart TV, a gaming console, or some other smart speaker devices, you can do so. You just have to register your MAC address by sending an email to support at seatonhill.edu. We'll get it added to our system so that you can connect it to our wireless network. But remember, during the first few days of classes, we'll be extra busy, so it might take a few days for us to get back to you on those items. As I mentioned earlier, we're a G Suite for Education school. Many of you may already be familiar with G Suite from, 
from your current schools. We do encourage you to continue using Google Docs and Drive. And with that unlimited storage, you can use Drive to back up all of your important documents and files. Google Drive also lets you store non-Google documents and files as well, which is important to know. In addition to the Google Suite, we also offer office licenses for you while you're a student. This will give you access to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, which may, you may need to use in some of your classes. You may have already caught on, but we call our help desk the Solution Center, and they're located in the Reeves Learning Commons in the center of campus. During the summer, we're only in the office Monday through Friday from eight to four, but our regular hours during school are listed on this slide. You can always email or call us or stop in um, to see us if you have a question or a problem. We also have a, a website on help.seatonhill.edu that includes handy hints and commonly asked questions, as well as links to our YouTube channel with help videos and links to other commonly used systems. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you and I'm happy to introduce Holly Crowell, our Director of Student Accounts. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, as Melissa said, I'm Holly Crowell. I'm the Director of Student Accounts. Um, our Office of Student Accounts and Financial Aid are actually part of our um, Office of Financial Services and the Registrar, which is located on the first floor of the admin building. Our office handles everything from registration, adding and dropping classes, um, questions about that, to billing, um, anything regarding the student account, as well as collecting financial aid documents and packaging students with financial aid for the year. Um, so student accounts uh, handles everything to do with your billing, um, student refunds, um, tax forms, anything that you would need regarding your student account and financial information. And we have all of our services through a third party provider called Nelnet. Um, Nelnet presents all of our student account information to students as well as um, allows you to choose your refund method. Um, you can retrieve bills through them. All of your information can be easily accessed in one place. So. To log into Nelnet, students just need to log into my shoe, which is where you kind of go for everything anyway, um, and then click on that link to uh, Nelnet Enterprise, at which point you can go in there and um, look at all that information and retrieve anything that you need. Uh, now, because the government does restrict uh, our releasing information to any third party, even a parent, uh, we do require the students to authorize parents or any other third party to make payments or to view student account information. And that can also be done on Nelnet Enterprise. So it's, it, again, all in the same place. Um, and that's where parents would typically go to make payments as well and um, to be able to set up payment plans uh, for, the, for the student too. All of our bills are electronic. I just wanted to add that just so that there's no confusion. Um, we don't send paper statements. All of our bills go electronically to our students uh, via their seatonhill.edu email address. Financial aid handles anything to do with um, the student's financial aid package. Um, anything that you would need regarding um, documentation or forms they can help with. Uh, they typically will reach out to students to help them to get packaged with financial aid. There's a financial aid center that's located um, close to our, our site, so close to Nelnet Enterprise on my shoe. Students can log in there and view any missing documentation that financial aid needs, um, financial aid awards, they can accept their award. So again, everything is easily located in one central area. Um, financial aid can also help in a lot of situations with um, students looking for other financial options. So if, um, if you have an out-of-pocket balance, you can look at, at options for um, other types of loans, um, grants, scholarships, payments. Um, so we can help you with uh, looking at any of those financial options for you too. 
Um, our office, like I said, is on the first floor in the admin building. Um, we love students to come and see us. We like to meet with people um, and sit down and, and go over this information with you. So if you ever need us, please feel free to stop by. We're there to help. Um, right now we're open eight to four Monday through Friday for summer hours, but typically we are open eight to five uh, Monday through Thursday and then until four on Fridays. Um, our contact information is here. It's also on the website and in my shoe. So if you um, need to refer to that, make sure to look us up. And like I said, stop in and see us. Um, and I'd like to turn it over now to Corey Campbell, the Director of Residence and Commuter Life. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. And thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what to expect um, when you're here on campus both as a resident and a commuter student. Um, go ahead, Matt. Awesome, so some of the things that you can be doing right now, um, months ahead of time, uh, your arrival. Uh, as soon as you get your class schedules, you can begin ordering your books from the bookstore. That way it's available for pickup. All you have to do is show up, uh, let them know your name, you walk in, get a bag, you already have all of your books for your classes. Um, you can also, once you know which books you need, start shopping around for the summer. Uh, a great way to stay up to date on what's happening um, and get information is to follow all the Seton Hill accounts on social media. Uh, we have lots of different accounts. Each one will have different celebrations, um, different information to welcome you to campus. And that's a great way to continue to get all that information over the summer as we anticipate your arrival. And finally, um, if you are gonna live on campus, uh, if you have a roommate already, that's great. Get to know them, start talking to your roommate. If you don't have a roommate, it's not too late to find a roommate. Um, we can take those pairings through June 30th. So these orientation events are a great opportunity. Sign on, meet other students, get to know people, see if there's anyone that you think you would be a good match with and again, we can take those roommate pairings through June 30th. Um, some of the shopping and packing that you can start doing in the meantime. We have, I'm sorry, is, Matt, is my camera on? I just got a message that says my camera's not working. It is not, it might, might be disconnected or something. It's a little logo there as opposed to your Beautiful smiling face. How about now? No. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going wrong tonight. We do this all the time. Um, <laughs> it's just blame it on the storm. Blame it on the storm. <laughs> so uh, some of the things that we can do for uh, shopping and packing now, um, twin extra long bedding. All of our beds on campus are twin XLs. If you think that you can stretch your regular twin sheets, the, they won't quite make it. Um, the good news is that's a standard college size bed. As these back to school sections start rolling out in stores, they should be super easy to find. You can also uh, check, you should have gotten a mailer or perhaps we'll just be getting it from our partners at OCM that allow you to buy packages of all of your bedding, um, towels, linens, et cetera. And you can actually have those delivered to campus. So if you're flying in or you're worried about getting your vehicle packed, um, we can have those here waiting for you for when you arrive. Surge protectors, uh, that's a great thing. Turn one plug into five or six, uh, very handy in the rooms. Sticky tack for hanging pictures, posters, and things on the wall. Please don't bring command strips. Um, please don't use duct tape. Uh, sticky tack will hold it up and will minimize damages and charges. A window fan or standing fan. Um, we have very large windows in our first year residence halls. That's Brownlee and Havy Hall. Um, if you have a box fan, like a 20 inch box fan, you can put those in the window and it really moves a lot of air in those rooms. The two fir first year residence halls are, are not air conditioned, but really after the first week or two of school, it gets much milder. Um, it always seems like it's going to be a problem that, that first day you show up in August, but it's going to get mild and more comfortable very soon. Uh, finally, our, our inside scoop here, uh, small folding step stool. You can find those at a lot of stores. Um, Bradley and Havy have a lot of storage, 
Some of it is, is six feet up in the air and it has deep shelving. Uh, step stool will help you fully utilize that room and make sure you don't throw something back there on move-in day and then not even find it until you move out. So uh, that allows you to fully utilize all that space. What not to bring? Um, mini fridges larger than 2.7 cubic feet. 2.7 cubic feet is the largest mini fridge that we allow. That will comfortably fit, you know, drinks, snacks, and the things that most college students need. Candles, diffusers, incense burners, um, any sort of space heaters, anything that, that catches on fire. Weapons, including BB guns, pellet guns, large knives, swords, um, any type of weapon, as well as electrical appliances. In our first year halls, we provide uh, a kitchen area in the common space that has a microwave, a toaster, a Keurig, and all those things that you might need. Um, the, the buildings are, are older. They're not quite built for everyone to have, you know, a full suite of electrical appliances in their room. So please leave those at home and just use the ones that we've provided. Um, getting ready to come to Seton Hill. Know that your roommate and move-in information will be sent to your Seton Hill email in July. Again, your Seton Hill email is going to be crucial. Make sure that you're checking that as that's where we'll share all this information with you. If you want to start planning ahead, move-in days will be August 19th and 20th. You will be assigned a time on one of those days to move in. Uh, additional move-in information, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on, you can always go to Seton Hill. Uh, edu and look at the student life housing and dining and moving into the halls page where we'll have the latest information and what if you're a commuter not living on campus we're, we're talking right now about move-in days but immediately following those move-in days we'll have welcome weekend to help get you ready uh, for your college experience and that will be august 20th 21st and 22nd so if you are planning to commute from campus or to campus Make sure that if you're working, you request these days off, um, you try to keep your schedule open, you will want to be here on campus August 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, for anyone who's moving in, you'll already be here. Oh, that's the, the first line is from last year. Uh, don't have to worry about wearing your mask in public spaces yet. Um, we'll, we'll let you know if there's any information as we get closer to the school year. That was from uh, the presentation last August. I thought I'd gotten them all. Um, join our clubs and organizations, honor societies, get involved here. Um, Sister Maureen O'Brien told you a lot about the rich history we have at Seton Hill and the traditions that we have on campus. Take part in, in these traditions, see and experience everything that Seton Hill has to offer. And that includes meeting the new people, seeing new perspectives on life, making new friends, um, engage with your classmates and your peers. That's what makes college really enjoyable. Go to class, study, connect with your faculty. We have amazing faculty who love to work one-on-one -on -one with students um, and find internships. This is a great part of making you academically successful and helping to prepare you for that postgraduate life. Um, and finally, get to know Greensburg and Westmoreland County. Uh, we not only want to welcome you to campus, but um, to the communities that so many of us live in. Um, so if you have questions, not only about campus, but you want to know uh, where to get the best uh, pizza or the best burger in town, where to get your hair cut, um, whatever you need, we're happy to help you explore, um, find a park to go do your homework in to get off campus for a day, uh, whatever it is, we're happy to connect you to those community resources. And finally, um, this was just a brief overview but we'll have lots more opportunities to learn more about campus and specifically our residence halls. So you can join us for some upcoming virtual orientation sessions. Life on the Hill is Thursday, July 8th from six to seven. That will have a lot of information for both commuter and resident students. Uh, the, the next one is the residence hall virtual tour. That's Tuesday, July 13th from six to seven. That one will really be focusing on the residence halls. By that time, you'll know which residence hall you've been assigned. So we'll really take you on a, a deep dive and, and let you see some of those spaces and ask questions about your rooms. 
Uh, if you have any questions, I'll stick around at the end here for a half hour for a Q&A session. Uh, otherwise, thanks for joining us. And I want to welcome Joanna Baldorian, who, oh, the, I, it, the one I'm looking at. I think at some of the slides got shuffled around, Corey. Yeah, I think some, some of the slides got shuffled, so. Okay, that was, I thought that was my last one. So commuter life, I'm sorry guys, it's something we must be working <laughs> on different copies today. Um, for commuter life, one of the things that you can do right now is look at some of your dining options at uh, the same website, that's our seatonhill.edu, student life, housing and dining. Um, there you'll find both term plans and block plans. I highly recommend that you at least consider a meal plan. Um, you know, when, when we get together with our friends, it's so often to sit down and eat and, and that's a, a social opportunity. And while your students are here on campus, that is a great way to spend time with friends, hang out for an hour between classes. And I don't want anyone to miss out on, on that bonding opportunity. Um, they can sign up for lockers. We have those available on campus. So if you're going back and forth, you have a long class day, you don't have to haul all your books around with you. Uh, commuter students are able to get mailboxes on campus. Um, we have a page dedicated to commuter frequently asked questions, again, at our seatonhill.edu website. And uh, again, to reiterate, make sure that you're planning to be on campus for August 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, other things we have going on on campus, um, SHU20, uh, it's actually becoming SHU Summit for next year. And this is our campus leadership program. It's a class that you'll be able to sign up in. It's a great opportunity to develop your leadership skills. I highly recommend you look into that. Our Student Government Association, SHGA, is uh, active on campus. It's a way for you to get involved and really uh, you know, start guiding some of the direction of, of what's happening on campus. Clubs and organizations. We have all kinds of clubs and orientation in organizations. If there isn't something that you're interested in, start it, build friends, um, share your passions with other people. And know that we'll have another orientation session that is the guide to getting involved. That will be Wednesday, July 14th from six to seven. So we have lots of upcoming sessions. And now we've actually reached the last one. I wanna welcome our acting registrar, Joanna Bodorian, and she will talk to you about their services. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Um, as Corey said, my name is Joanna Baldurian. I'm the acting registrar here at Seton Hill University. And I'm sure you are all very anxious about what your fall schedule is going to look like. Um, there are a lot of factors that go into determining your fall schedule. So we do ask for your patience. Uh, we'll be working on those schedules throughout the summer. Um, we do take into consideration, um, well, first of all, your placement assessments. I'm sure you've gotten many emails from admissions about your placement assessment. So if you have not yet taken those assessments, you need to do so, so that we can uh, start working on your fall schedule. Um, check your email. I'm sure there are lots of communications in there from the, um, from the admissions office about those. Uh, also, whenever you completed your new student form questionnaire, we asked you some questions about courses that you may have taken in college or in high school, in college, dual enrollment, that sort of thing. Also advanced placement. Uh, we do look at that. Um, we do transfer those credits in, but we do need your official transcripts before we can officially bring them in. Um, we do take those into consideration before we have the official transcripts, as long as we know that you've taken those courses or exams. So as soon as possible, if you have taken any college credits or advanced placement exams, contact the college or the college board and get us those official transcripts and official scores. And we can officially put those credits on your record. Um, the registrar's office will then send a draft of your schedule to your advisor. Uh, your advisor will then contact you by phone or email to discuss any changes, if any changes are necessary. So you do wanna make sure that you check your Seton Hill email regularly and often. Make sure that your voicemail is set up and your voicemail box is not full. Um, that is very important. Um, so I can't say for sure how your advisor will wanna reach out to you. So you will wanna make sure that 
you are available um, to receive messages if you're not available to talk at that time. And only your advisor can make changes to your fall schedule. So um, please don't email to ask for changes that can only go through your advisor. And then your advisor contacts the registrar's office to make those changes. If you're not contacted by your advisor by July 26th, you may email me at jbuldurian at setonhill.edu on or after July 26th. Um, there's not really a set schedule for e each student, like when, I can't say when you're going to be registered, um, when your schedule is going to be ready. So we do ask for your patience. But again, if you don't hear from your advisor by the end of July, please send me an email and I will see where we are uh, with your schedule. And some important references to know about are regarding the registrar's office, um, your program. The university catalog is a wonderful resource. You can find links to the college catalog in my shoe. At the bottom, you'll see some links for the catalog. You'll see program pages um, where you can find your program and the courses that are required, liberal arts information, what courses are required for your liberal arts curriculum. And also the documents and forms area is very important. Um, if you're in my shoe at the very top, you'll see a link that says documents and forms. If you go to the registrar's office section, you'll find lots of forms regarding adding and dropping, um, pretty much any form you would need <laughs> for the registrar's office. Um, also the academic calendar. The academic calendar is very, very, very important. There's all the important dates that you need to be aware of throughout the semester. So you'll find that in there as well. I always recommend that you print out a copy of that calendar and keep it handy so that you know important dates uh, for the semester, add, drop, beginning, end, that sort of thing. Um, there's a directory if you need to locate somebody on campus, um, please use that directory link. And there's a lot more in my shoe. So you start exploring anytime. There's a lot of information in there. And also Griffin Gate. Griffin Gate is your portal to for your own personal information. That's where you can find your schedule. Um, that's where you'll be registering on your own next semester. You'll be able to find your advising worksheet, which isn't ready yet. So um, that'll be later in the summer, like closer to the end of the summer. You'll be able to look at your advising worksheet. And what that shows is an outline of the courses you've taken, courses that, you're, that are needed, any electives that you've taken, um, your GPA, cumulative credits, and your advisor's name. And also at Griffin Gate, you can find your unofficial transcript. You can access those anytime. And also our email address for the Office of Financial Services and the Registrar is helpfinreg at setonhill.edu. It's easy to remember. If you need help with financial stuff or registration stuff, email helpfinreg and they will help you out. We have a lot of wonderful, knowledgeable people who can answer your questions. And if they can't help you, they will send you to someone who can answer your question. And that is all I have for you. I'm gonna pass you over to Linda Sukolsky. Thanks, Joanna. Hello everyone and welcome to Seton Hill University. I'm Linda Sukolsky and I am pleased to share with you the academic enrichment centers and support programs that are in place to assist students in reaching their academic goals. First up is the Academic Achievement Center. This center offers a variety of services, including study strategy assistance, such as getting organized and taking tests, academic counseling meetings to strengthen academic habits and behaviors, and a peer tutoring program. Study strategy assistance and academic counseling are done primarily through one-to-one -one meetings. Campus workshops also address study strategy topics and are open to all Seton Hill students. The peer tutoring program is a great resource and an excellent way to master course material. The program employs approximately 35 to 40 tutors and supports over 50 courses each semester. The peer tutors are recommended by faculty and all tutoring is course specific, meaning if a student is taking accounting one or chemistry one, the tutor has taken that exact course and is able to tutor on the specific course content. Tutoring is free and students can work with a tutor as often as they would like. Drop-in and appointment tutoring is available. All of these services provided can be found on the Academic Achievement Center website, 
which can be accessed through my shoe. The tutoring schedule is located on the website and will list drop-in tutoring times and how to contact tutors to set up an appointment. The website also contains an on-demand success video library where students can access quick videos targeting key success strategies. The next center is the Mathematics Enrichment Center. The Mathematics Enrichment Center, or MEC for short, provides academic support and enrichment opportunities for students enrolled in mathematics and related coursework. As a dedicated workspace for math, students may use the MEC to collaborate with peers or study independently. Students are strongly encouraged to take advantage of the undergraduate peer tutoring program offered through the MEC. Drop-in sessions and one-on-one -on -one appointments are available both in person and online for math, statistics, and other quantitative coursework. Students can receive assistance with problem solving, understanding concepts, and test preparation. In addition to peer tutoring, the MEC offers review sessions, supplemental workshops, facilitated study groups, and access to learning software, including the Alex placement and prep and learning modules. The MEC also continues to expand its enrichment opportunities, including competitions, programs for future math professionals, and math intervention for elementary school students. For information on tutoring and other opportunities, students can visit the MEC website on My Shoe under Campus Services. The MEC also sends out information through Canvas course announcements when applicable. Our next center is the Writing Center. Writing is an important skill for success in college and in careers. The Writing Center encourages students in developing their writing and assists them with the significant writing required in Seton Hill's curriculum. The center works with all writers from first year to graduate students. For those beginning college, the Writing Center helps with the transition from high school to college level compositions which can pose new challenges. Students come to the Writing Center at any stage of their writing process, from coming up with ideas to revising drafts. As students are introduced to the writing related to their particular career fields, the Writing Center staff members can aid with assignments and styles specific to different disciplines. This support is provided primarily through one-on-one -on -one sessions with trained student writing consultants. During these sessions, which can occur either online or face-to-face, -face, the consultants don't fix students' papers for them. Instead, they work with students, giving feedback and providing strategies they can use to improve their own writing skills. The Writing Center staff also presents workshops, both in classes and on campus. Students can find more resources about writing on the Writing Center website accessed from the main My Shoe page. All of these services promote the Writing Center's ultimate goal to encourage all students in becoming stronger, more confident writers so they can communicate effectively. Next, I'd like to share the three academic enrichment support programs which provide additional layers of support to qualifying students. TRIO, Student Support Services, is a federally funded program that provides academic and personal support services to 170 students. Specific support services include writing and study strategy assistance, academic coaching, financial literacy, and graduate school assistance. Additional benefits, such as a textbook lending library, are available to qualifying students. Undergraduate students are able to submit an application for consideration to be a participant in the program. The Opportunity Program is a year-long academic and personal support program that assists students in transitioning to the college environment. Admittance to this program is through the Admissions Committee. 
Opportunity program participants enroll in a week-long course prior to the beginning of the fall semester and receive ongoing support, including a peer mentor, writing assistants, and academic success courses throughout their first year of college. CAPS, which stands for Collegiate Academic and Personal Success, is an enrollment category designated by the admissions committee. CAP students receive an additional layer of academic support, including an academic coach and a one credit academic success course. During the Q&A session at the end of the presentation, Opportunity and CAP students and parents are encouraged to join the TRIO Opportunity and CAP's breakout room to ask questions and get information. The Academic Achievement Center, Mathematics Enrichment Center, and Writing Center staff will be available to answer questions as well in a second breakout room. We look forward to speaking with you at this time and seeing everyone in August. And now I'd like to pass things along to my good friend, Keisha Jimerson, who is our Associate Dean of Students for Diversity, Inclusion, and International Student Services. Good evening. I'm delighted to be with you all this evening, especially our new students and their families. As Linda introduced me uh, earlier, I am Keisha. I'm the Associate Dean for Students. Um, but you will find out as first year students, uh, the upperclassmen and typically all the students just call me Miss Keisha. You can find me on admin 502. That's the administration building 502. So what I want to talk to you right now is Seton Hill's commitment to diversity, inclusion, and equity. It's deeply rooted in the mission of Seton Hill University. And as we started our program tonight, you had the pleasure of meeting with Sister Mo or Sister Maureen O'Brien, and she talked to you a little bit about our pillars. I wanna go a little bit deeper with the diversity, inclusion and equity because Elizabeth Ann Seton, who was the foundress of the Sisters of Charity, believed in everyone's right to an education. And that seeps into everything we do here at Seton Hill University. So again, with that, I wanna talk about our four pillars. So when you think about diversity, inclusion and equity, and how it's rooted in our mission, we welcome all. We celebrate each person's uniqueness as we were created and we learn from each other, new perspectives, new ideas, new ways of thinking. I believe personally, that's all, that is why you all signed up to get a higher education, to go on with your education. So when you're here at Seton Hill, you'll start off as this first year student straight out of high school, but whether you are commuting or whether you're living here, this is your really your second home and you'll be exposed to so much. So I think the thing that I want you to take away uh, from my piece of the talk is keep that open mind, be excited about all your new experiences be excited about the people that you're gonna interact with. Um, and with one of the pillars, when Sister Maureen talked about uh, us serving, we serve each other, right? But also in serving, you expose yourself to people that are in different socioeconomic classes. So different socioeconomic classes, that's also a part of your diversity. We all come from different backgrounds. Next slide, Matt, I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, so there are so many facets and intersections as we discuss diversity. Um, initially, I always say this to students, initially when people look at me as an African-American woman, they typically say, oh, well, she just cares about um, racial diversity. There are so many facets and intersections as we discuss diversity. So there is cultural, racial, religious, age, gender, sexual orientation, and disability. There's so much that makes you what you are. So here we have a snapshot of how our student body was in spring 2021. 
and I'm just going to go through it with you. So in spring 2021, Seton, ha Seton Hill had approximately 190, look at me, not 100, one, it's been a long day, 1,973 students. Out of those students, roughly are 19% of color. So you can go down through that and look at the different, um, the different counts on each one. And then I'm proud to say we also, we're all proud to say we have 37 international students. And those students come from all over the globe in different pockets and have decided to uh, make that transition and come to study in the States and specifically at Seton Hill University. So again, as I said, um, we have a number of resources and with those resources that will be provided to you, like everyone talked about, you have students, clubs, and organizations. And Corey Campbell talked about that a bit. But specifically with diversity, inclusion, um, and equity, the student clubs and organizations that we have here at Seton Hill that you might, um, might find affinity with, they're open to everyone, would be MISO. And that is a short term, so I'm gonna, just gonna tell you what that means. MISO is the Multicultural and International Student Organization. They do a wide range of events, a fan favorite, a student favorite, um, I think a campus favorite is the International Food Festival uh, that, we that we usually have every fall. We also have the Black Student Union. Um, they do a number of different uh, programs and events. Uh, we started off last uh, academic year with a welcome to everyone, uh, you know, welcome to the to school with good food, music, um, poetry exchanges that the Black Student Union um, opened up to campus. And then about, about two weeks ago, we ended with a like summer bash to wish everyone well and to tell them that we would see them uh, back in the fall. Also, we have the Pride Coalition. And the Pride Coalition are with the members of our community that identify as LGBTQIA+. And they also do a number of programs to educate our community. Um, as I said before, my office is um, on admin, the administration building 502. It is the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and International Student Services. As Sister Maureen, mentioned before, we are deeply rooted in community service and Catholic social teaching, because as you enter your college career, you know, you're going to progress and develop. Um, you'll be exposed to, um, you know, the things that Seton Hill is rooted in. There's also that comes with diversity. We have a number of students who have been veterans or they might still be in the military. We have the Blackburn Center SAGE program because Seton Hill a lot aligns with them on stopping domestic violence. There's the counseling and disability services. We have the National Center for Holocaust Education. Seton Hill is a harassment free community and we follow Title IX regulations. And as Linda mentioned before, we have the Collegiate Academic and Personal Success Program and the Opportunity Program. So as I said before, there is so much that makes you you. I'm so excited for you to be on this call tonight. Um, and if you have any questions, we are gonna have an upcoming session and I'm looking at my slide. I didn't say when, but it will be in June. <laughs> I'm pulled up, it's, yeah, it's July, that. it's July. Oh, it's yep, July. I got you. It is July inclusion, virtual orientation. July 19th. July 19th. Yep, July 19th, which is a Monday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. And my colleague would, will join me, Kimberly Bassey Cook, and I will be presenting to you again. Um, and also when we finish this whole session, I will be on at 7.30 in a separate room if you have any specific questions. And it is my great pleasure to now introduce Terry Bassey Cook, she is the Director of Counseling and Disability Services. Thank you, Terry. Oh, thank you, Keisha. <clears throat> so let me add my welcome to everybody else's. Um, it's good to have you here this evening. And I'm delighted to talk to you about a couple of the services 
that um, we have for you. So our counseling services are our psychological or our mental health services. We have three full-time counselors and one counselor intern that is available to meet with the students. Uh, our office hours are Monday through Thursday from eight to five, uh, Fridays from eight to four. And we will also have evening hours, but we haven't quite yet decided what evening, but we'll have some later hours uh, on at least one night a week. We have crisis and after hours on call daily to include weekends. And we're located like Keisha up on the fifth floor of the administration building, as well as the fourth floor. Our services are confidential. Um, and that means that we're not going to share any of our converse, uh, conversations with parents, uh, faculty, any other members uh, of the staff. Uh, our services are also free and we can assist you with off-campus referrals if you are interested in meeting with a private practitioner off campus. If you're currently working with a therapist, we would also encourage that you connect with our office so that we can strategize for continuity of care uh, for you to make sure that you get the support on campus that you need and that you're accustomed to. Um, we have online appointment scheduling. We try to make it pretty easy to schedule an appointment with one of the counselors. So we've got some directions there for how you uh, go about making an appointment. As Matt told you, this is going to be uh, recorded so you can refer back to this session. You don't really need to take this down now, but just know that we do have online appointment scheduling for you. Uh, in the fall, we're hoping very much to be able to resume in-person sessions. But one of the things that we learned from COVID is that we can do things pretty well remotely too, and that that works better for some students who maybe just don't have the time to travel from lower campus to upper campus and make it in time for an appointment. So we're gonna to continue to offer the option for telecounseling sessions for students who would prefer to meet with counselors that way. Every day, Monday through Friday, we offer, offer crisis triage appointments. Those are um, times that we set aside that there are no appointments necessary. If you just happen to have a bad day, you wanna swing by and talk to a counselor, we've set aside time each day that that can occur for you. And for those students who are wanting to meet remotely but don't have a private space to do that, we do have a private room available that students can reserve for the telecounseling appointments. Something that we're going to be launching new this fall is also going to be a virtual Let's, let's, let's Talk service. <clears throat> These are going to be 15 minute consultations and uh, some examples of what students might use the Let's Talk for would be students who aren't sure about counseling wondering what it's like, wants to just talk to a counselor and feel it out a little bit. Uh, maybe students who are not interested in counseling but would like the perspective of a counselor. Uh, sometimes students who have specific problems and they would like to have someone whom they could talk it through with and sometimes just a concern for a friend and you want uh, some thoughts about how you might manage that situation. So that's, that's gonna be the uh, virtual let's talk. You folks are actually the first people to hear about this. Uh, our upper class returning students uh, don't know that this is going to be an offering from our center uh, just yet. We try to have also a, a social presence so you can follow us on Instagram. We're at Counseling Center at SHU and we have a program uh, through the Counseling Center also called Dear Liz at SHU where students can write in and ask any questions about anything that they want. We actually have a student who responds to those and pushes those messages back out to you on the Dear Liz platform. That's been um, a new initiative that we started this spring. Seems to be uh, very well received by the students and uh, getting some good traction. Want to give you just some ideas like, uh, you know, what do you come to the counseling center for? Well, uh, it's a whole host of things. It can be self-esteem, harassment, relationship issues, roommate problems, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, depression, anxiety, eating disorders. Uh, so anything sort of from soup to nuts. Uh, a really common one during the first couple of weeks of the semester is just some homesickness. Um, you're just missing your friends, missing, missing home, missing mom's good cooking, uh, or maybe dad's good cooking. I'm not gonna just tag it on mom there. Uh, <clears throat> so we like to be a place that you can come up and talk with us about anything that's on your mind. The university has a, a, a care team, and this is a multidisciplinary group of people. Some of the people that you've met with um, this evening sit on the care team. We get together once a week, 
And um, we talk about any concerns that may be going on with students. So this would be another place where a faculty member or a student could send an email to the care team if they had any concerns about anybody on campus and the care team would do some follow-up. Our RAs, our OLs, and many of our faculty and staff are also trained in mental health first aid. So we try to have a lot of people on campus ready positioned to help the students who might be struggling. Uh, our disability services office for students who have a diagnosed medical dis disability, a learning disability or a psychiatric disability, uh, we are here to support you. We need you to submit documentation for us to determine eligibility and what the appropriate supports would be for you. Um, we would recommend that you do that as soon as possible for us. And earlier in this presentation, Joanne uh, from the uh, registrar's office was talking to you about some placement exams that you're going to have to take. If you've been receiving accommodations in, in the uh, K-12 program, extended time, distraction reduced, any of those kinds of things, you wanna reach out to us right away before you take those placement exams so that we can work with those offices to make sure that you have those accommodations so that the placement exams uh, are a good reflection of, of your ability and we get you placed in, in the best uh, classes that we can. Uh, the, the accommodations in the higher education system can be a little different than they are in the K-12 uh, setting. And so again, another reason why we would like to connect with you and talk that through to make sure that we have all of the accommodations set up for you. The accommodations are not retroactive. Uh, what does that mean? That means if you start the semester out and you take a test and that test doesn't go too well for you, uh, there's no do-overs. And we can certainly put those accommodations in for you from that point forward, but there's not gonna be anything that we're gonna be able to do about what's already happened. So we do recommend that we get those things set up for you. We can actually do that over the summer. We don't have to wait until the semester. So just reach out for us. We are also the office that uh, provides some temporary supports. So sometimes students get injured while they're there, uh, trip on the sidewalk or, you know, uh, sports injury or, or just, you know, a whole host of things that can happen. But if it's affecting your ability to get around on campus or if it's affecting your ability to be a successful student in the classroom, we want to partner with you so that we can think about what kinds of supports we might be able to put in for you to make that healing process go a little bit easier. Uh, this too is a confidential service. It's a free service. Uh, so you'll want to um, connect with us as soon as you can. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, Annette Smite. She's the Director of Health Services. Uh, Annette. Okay, thank you, Terry, um, for that introduction. There we go. Um, so I'm, can you see my video? I'm, I'm still seeing Terry. Yep, we can see you. It might just be because you, you're speaking, you might not be able to see yourself, but yeah. Oh, okay. You're okay. there for us. Good, perfect. Okay, well, welcome. Um, I, I thank you all for being here. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, as Terry mentioned, my name is Annette Smych and I serve as the Director of Health Services. So your health services team consists of uh, myself. I am a, a board certified family nurse practitioner. And to your left there, you see uh, Jackie Greathouse. She is a registered nurse. And to the far right uh, is Beth Morey and she serves as our administrative assistant. And so if you come up to the fifth floor, we, we share, um, we're in the same area as counseling and disability services. So you will have the chance to meet Beth Morey. She serves as the um, admin assistant for um, both health services counseling and disability services. So during the academic year, we are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday. Uh, at this time, we are working on adding another staff person so that we can have evening hours. And we are also looking to expand into Saturday hours. So hopefully by the time you get up here on, uh, in August, we will have that all worked out for you. 
Um, health services, just like uh, counseling services and disability services, we are located on the fifth floor of the administration building. We have, uh, you can see our office number is listed as well as our email address. So I would encourage you that uh, if tonight after orientation or in the upcoming days or weeks ahead, if you have any questions uh, regarding immunizations or services provided, or you have a chronic medical condition and you would just like to you know, talk about your specific health needs, please don't hesitate to reach out um, to call, either call or email. I would like you to know that um, visits to health services are free and confidential, which means um, if you are over 18, you, um, your information is uh, protected. And so it cannot be shared without your consent. So if you are 18 and you come in for uh, whatever health issue, uh, and if your parent would call and ask, you know, was Johnny in and why was he in to see you? We cannot share that information. So I, I want you to know that, you know, that is something, confidentiality is something that we take very seriously. So um, it is a safe place to, to come. Next slide, please. So just like your um, primary healthcare provider, um, appointments are required in health services. The uh, process to make an appointment is exactly the same as it is for counseling services. So you can uh, go back and um, reflect or read those instructions uh, when you have a chance. But whenever you make a, an appointment for health services, there will be a little section for you to include the reason for your visit. And that is really important because we want to make sure that we, um, if, if you need a telehealth visit, we will do a telehealth visit. However, there are just certain things that we cannot do a telehealth visit for. Uh, so um, we can schedule a telemedicine visit if, if it's appropriate. If not, um, we will schedule you for an in-person appointment. Depending on your circumstances, we may need to do a COVID test prior to having you coming up onto the floor. And again, that's, that's just for everybody's safety. Uh, so that would be discussed with you when you make the appointment. Um, if you are having symptoms that we think that could be COVID, then we would refer you directly to the, the testing area. Um, we do do testing for COVID and I'm gonna talk about some other things that we test for. Uh, or another situation, if you are having an acute issue, we may just help direct you to the emergency room or to MedExpress. So, um, but again, if, if, if you're not sure, you know, you think you, maybe you would like a telehealth visit, but you're not really sure, you know, again, we, we will have a, a communication. Uh, the most important thing is we are your partners in health. So we, we want to work with you and um, we're in this together. Next slide, please. Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, so health services, what does that mean? What do you uh, offer? So um, the obvious one is we do evaluation and treatment for acute illnesses and injuries. So if you are having a cold, if you have a sinus infection or bronchitis, um, we um, do asthma management. Um, so pretty much anything that you would see your primary care provider for, we can take care of uh, for you in health services. If a prescription is needed, um, we can send a prescription to a pharmacy that delivers on campus. Hunter Pharmacy is one that we work with closely. So um, if you do not have a vehicle on campus, most people do not, you can just let us know and they can do same day delivery. So that is really a nice service. Uh, if you have a pharmacy that you prefer, uh, if you are a commuter and you always go to Rite Aid or CVS, that is not a problem. We can send the prescription to whatever pharmacy you prefer um, so that you can pick up. We also offer uh, starter packs of uh, sample, sample medications. So we do have little sample packs of Advil and Tylenol um, just to kind of help get you started. One thing I would um, strongly encourage you to do is, uh, as Corey has, had mentioned some of the things to pack for school, I would start putting together a first aid kit. That is really important. Um, in this first aid kit, number one, have a thermometer. Um, that is going to be really critical. 
Uh, also pack some analgesics, you know, a bottle of Tylenol, some Advil, topical antibiotic cream. Um, if you happen to be outside and, you know, you, you have a blister, you know, you want to have something where you can, you know, do simple wound cleaning, uh, some band-aids, things like that, some uh, cough and cold medicine, because there's nothing worse when you're feeling ill and you're not, you know, you're feeling kind of crappy and you, you, we can give you a starter pack, but then you have nothing in your room. So um, it's hard to go out to the shop for these things when you're not feeling very well. So if you can put yourself together a little kit, that would be great. Uh, other things we do in health services, uh, we do some point of care testing. Point of care test means that we can do the test in health services and you get the results before you leave. So some of the things that we offer are um, a strep testing, testing for mono, um, urinary tract infections, and of course, COVID testing. We do, um, you know, this past academic year, we have done a lot of COVID testing. If you have, um, if you need blood work done, so for example, if you are from out of town and you have blood work done every six months for some reason, uh, you don't have to worry about well, where am I going to go to get this lab work drawn. We can do it for you in health services. So um, we, uh, the only thing that we would ask now that is something that is billed to your insurance. So anytime we are sending something to the lab and we use Quest Lab we would need your insurance. So it would be billed directly to your insurance. Um, other things that are offered are specialty services. So if any of you are on um, allergy injections, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about our protocol and our process. And um, if that is something that uh, you, um, you get allergy injections, please contact me sooner than later because there is a process that we have to go through and your allergist has to sign some documentation. Um, we collaborate with other disciplines, um, you know, Terry in counseling services and Kimberly in disability services work very closely with them as well as other, um, you know, faculty, every, basically everybody that's on this call. Uh, we, you know, if we do have, when we do COVID testing and we have identified somebody who tests positive, we do our own contact tracing. So that is not done by an outside source. So you, again, you can feel very safe and assured that, um, you know, it is somebody from the staff of health services that is talking to you. And the whole purpose of this is to protect our campus community. Next slide, please. So um, a, a big question here, you might want to screenshot this. Uh, if you are on campus and it's you know 10 o'clock at night, it's 11 o'clock at night, now you need help, where do you go? Um, first and foremost, if it's an emergency, always call 911. Um, that is, do not delay, call 911. And then if you have a roommate or you can you know, get your RA, then they can let campus police know that you have called 911. The reason why we do that process is, uh, you know, campus police would meet 911 down at the bottom of the hill to direct you. Also, uh, there is MedExpress, so I have that information for you as well. Uh, next slide, please. So lastly, what are some other important things to know? Um, you know, one of our big jobs, especially this time of the year, is immunization compliance. So please, if you have not already, get onto MedProctor. Um, you should have received that information in your, um, in your packet, in your admission packet. If you have any questions about that, you know what's required, please um, please call or send me an email. Uh, during the weekday, Monday through Friday, all emails and phone calls are responded to you know, the same day. So please reach out. Um, we are planning some COVID vaccine clinics this summer. So uh, we are planning for one on campus in July, but um, you know, the, the COVID vaccines are pretty easy to get. They're pretty much at any, any pharmacy. Um, we also, if any of you will need a PPD test for an educational experience or a clinical experience, we will ha be having a PPD clinic. A PPD clinic is also known as a TB test. So, um, you know, more information will be forthcoming. Typically we have that the very first week of school just because um, students need it for their experiences. We are, we'll be hosting a blood drive in the fall, sometime uh, in the middle of September. And finally, I can, you know, you might wanna write these dates down. These are the dates of the flu clinic. Um, Hayden Pharmacy will be operating our uh, flu clinic 
they will, um, you will be registering for this online, putting your insurance information, uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll um, go seamlessly as our COVID clinics have done. So um, that's everything that I have. Uh, I look forward to talking with you later. I will be on the breakout session if you have any specific questions. And also, you know, please feel free to email me or call me as well. And so with that, um, I would like to thank you for your time. And I would like to introduce Darren, who is the general manager of Dining Services. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Annette, so much. So uh, as the university uh, nourishes your minds, my job is actually to nourish bodies. So um, going forward to just a little brief topic about uh, what dining services uh, and many questions about meal plans, you can find our information at the, if you look at Shoe Life at the, uh, and click on the housing and then get down to dining from there. You can find all the information when it comes to meal plans. Most folks have a question always, you know, there are, there are so many different meal plan choices in 19, 14, and 10, and each respectfully with flex dollars. What do I buy and how do I buy? And I say, be the smart shopper. And usually we look at hours that you are traveling uh, where is home? So if you're more than two hours away, buy into that 19 meal plan. If you're less than an hour away, buy into the 14 meal plan. It's a little less expensive and it gives you some flexibility. Um, and then if you uh, are really local and you'll live kind of close by that 10 meal plan, because you probably be more often than not bumping back home uh, on that. So when we look at uh, places to dine on campus, there are several locations. We have Low Dining Hall, which is our residential restaurant. Um, and it is the all you can eat situation that is open from seven in the morning until seven at night. Uh, we have the Griffin's Cove. The Griffin's Cove um, has a dining uh, app that comes to it. So it is an, uh, an order app that comes through. It's called Dining Sidekick. If you look through your uh, Play Store, you can actually find the Dining Sidekick app and then you just click on the university and you'll be able to sign in. And that's, uh, that's how the orders are placed through there. We, play, we did that uh, for COVID reasons. Um, it was all curbside pickup, but we think we're gonna continue that type of service uh, as the semesters go on and, and when we get out of this pandemic. So it's a really quick and easy way to get your orders and know what that is. The Griffin's Cove is kind of the uh, snack bar. It's the uh, comfort foods that you have have on campus, but they have a ton of grab and go and healthy options and all those things as well. Um, we also have the Dance and Visual Arts Cafe, which is in the downtown um, sector of the building. We are a Starbucks proudly brew campus. So there are many Starbucks drinks. Uh, we have that coffee cravings and so forth. Um, we have the Boil Vibe. This is a 24 hour operation that is located in the Health and Science Building. It only accepts cash or credit card there. There are no meal swipes or anything available at that location. Uh, but if you do get that late night hunger for something, there are some frozen dinners and meals and those kind of things that can supply you for that uh, 24 hour operation. And one thing we added last semester and everybody's asked me, is it coming back in the fall? And that is our low to go. Um, we have a food trailer that's on campus and we have some absolutely amazing staff that can help you through any type of dining situation. And if you get the opportunity to meet um, Alberto, uh, one of my Cuban chef in the kitchen, he is mostly in that food trailer at any given time, but it's the sights and smells. It's located outside Low Dining Hall twice a week and then down at the Dance and Visual Arts twice a week. So it gives people an opportunity to get outside and dine um, with a great sort of boxed experience. Um, and uh, just know that if you have any dietary concerns, we have so many uh, folks that, uh, as Annette had alluded to, allergens, and when we look at uh, food allergies that come to you. So we have uh, celiac patients, we have uh, nut, tree nut allergies, we have uh, a plethora of shellfish and uh, uh, lactose intolerant and uh, vegan and vegetarian options are all available. In the residential restaurant area, there are 11 stations that you can get something to select to dine on. And if you can't find something in any of those 11, you can make arrangements with the chef in the back and they will make you just about anything that you're looking for. So that is a brief run and overview of dining. If you go to the My Shoe page and click on 
uh, again, student services and then click through to dining services. You can look at our locations. You can see everything that's there and uh, look forward to some special events that happen throughout the semester too that are kind of monotony breakers. So there's piles of those that kind of kick around. So that is dining as a whole. And now it is my job to introduce to you, Michelle Proctor, the Director of Public Safety and Chief of Police. Oh, Michelle, you're on mute still. There you go. I looked down and saw you there. There you go. I, I'm last, but uh, certainly not least, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all that waiting, I guess I got a little distracted. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Michelle Proctor. I'm the Chief of Campus Police here at Seton Hill University. Uh, the Campus Police Department uh, is made up of trained law enforcement professionals. Our primary responsibility is uh, to serve and protect the university community and its property. <clears throat> Most of us in campus police have come to Seton Hill after long law enforcement careers in the public sector. We are the one group of people here on campus where you can reach 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You dial our number, we will pick up the phone. Maybe not me personally, but one of us will. We have a great team. Uh, <clears throat> next slide, Matt. If you need to stop down to campus, please, we're at 115 Administrative Annex, which is in uh, next to the Greensburg room. And once you guys get on campus and get familiar, I'm sure you'll be very uh, familiar with where the Greensburg room is. So campus police officers, like I said, are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So how do you get a hold of us? Well, if you have a non-emergency, we want you to call uh, the number 724-830-4999. You can also call 724-244-2192. Um, it's really important that you put those numbers into your phone because you may just have a question and you want to have us in there. So you just push a button and you can get a hold of us. Um, also, you know, your parents may want to have those numbers as well. Um, as the parent of a student going off to college for the first time in the fall, I definitely will be putting the uh, university's campus police numbers in my phone. So. Um, if you do have an emergency, like Annette said, you need to dial 911. Don't call the non-emergency numbers that I gave you. You're gonna dial 911, right? Um, campus police are gonna be dispatched anyway. We get dispatched by Greensburg Police Dispatch. So we're gonna be in route anyway. We're probably gonna be there before the other responding agencies, but you do need to get uh, to dial 911. Um, we may need to have additional uh, resources there, fire, ambulance, depending on the nature of the emergency. So we wanna get those other resources started. So 911 is your go-to. So what is an emergency and what's a non-emergency? Let's go, Matt. So in a, a true emergency, an emergency uh, where you're gonna dial 911 could consist of any of the following, and it's not limited to this list, but it kind of gives you an idea. Um, any medical emergency where you're gonna need uh, an ambulance to respond, right? That's a 911 situation where you want to dial 911, not the non-emergency number. Um, if you see a fire, flames, you smell smoke, a chemical leak, or any natural gas smell, 911 is your go-to. Um, any violent crime or other crime that's in progress, that means it's occurring right then. And that could be uh, anything from assault, shots fired, vandalism, thefts, burglaries in progress, domestic disputes, fights, anything that's an imminent threat to life or safety. And I can assure you, this is a very safe campus. However, uh, I just want you guys to understand what is a true emergency. All right, now. So what is a non-emergency call? This is probably the most common call you're gonna make to campus police. And that's usually for a non-emergency. Um, if you are locked out, and not just locked out of uh, a building or your room or something. A lot of times um, that could include your vehicle. If you lock your keys in your car, we do have the ability to help you get into that vehicle. Um, maybe you want an escort, it's late at night. Maybe you're uh, working a job or you had a study group that uh, got back late and uh, you want one of us to escort you back to your dorm room. We are more than happy to do that. Like I said, 24 seven we will be more than happy to 
come to wherever you are and give you a safe escort back to uh, wherever you're going on campus. If you see uh, suspicious persons or vehicles, maybe just something out of the ordinary that you want us to check out, hey, give us a call, that non-emergency number. Um, if you just have public safety questions or concerns, um, a lot of times we get questions about traffic violations or things that, uh, you know, you just kind of were wondering about, maybe you just want an answer. We're more than happy to help you out with that. Like I said, we have a lot of experience in campus police. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, if you have an animal complaint, um, this is uh, a very uh, nature-like environment here at Seton Hill, and we get a lot of uh, animal visitors that come around as far as rabbits and things like that are furry creatures. So uh, a lot of times uh, the kids want to give us a call and uh, for us to handle that. Uh, loud music, disorderly people, uh, alcohol violations, verbal disputes, hazardous conditions, anything like that. Those are non-emergencies, right? Uh, you come back and maybe you discover that your laptop isn't on the table in the dining hall where you left it and four hours ago. So maybe you want to check and call campus police. Maybe somebody turned it in. You know, we can help you that way. Um, we'll do our best to find it. If not, we'll take a report that uh, that property is either missing or stolen. And the most important thing to remember about campus police that is that we're here for the safety of the students. And that's any time of the day or night, right? Uh, and we're here to help. We're not um, here to get you guys in trouble. We're not here to cause problems. We're literally here as a resource for you and to help with anything that you would need. Um, and we'll do our best. If we don't know the answer to the question you're asking, we'll find somebody that does. Some other things that we do, a lot of times people don't know is uh, jumping vehicles. Um, a lot of times you get a dead battery. Um, it's like I said, Western Pennsylvania, it gets cold. Sometimes we leave our cars in the lot too long. So uh, those are other things that we can help you with. Um, another important thing I wanna make sure you guys understand is signing up for the E2 Campus Alert System. And that is a free text and email messaging system. And it's used to notify students and employees when there's a major emergency, crisis, disaster, weather emergency, closing or delay here at Seton Hill. Um, more often than not, it's gonna be something related to weather. Um, we are, like I said, Western Pennsylvania, we do get that white stuff that falls out of the sky here. And sometimes uh, there may be a reason for the university to notify you of a situation that's occurred. Um, if you want to enroll in that service, and I really think it's a good idea, as soon as you can, get yourself enrolled in that. Um, you can go, and I, it's on the screen and you can review it later, but it's at alerts.seatonhill.edu. But the most uh, efficient and quick way to do it is to just text the word Seton, S-E-T-O-N, to the number 79516. And that'll get you signed up for it automatically. It's way simpler than going on to uh, the computer and doing it that way. You can also have additional people if you would like if you have a spouse or a parent or a significant other that you would like to have uh, signed up for the E2 Campus Alert, um, you can certainly do that. And then if your number changes, just uh, go in the computer, update your information or do the text Seton 79516 and it'll update with a new phone number. Next. So parking permits, that's one of the main things we handle here on campus. Um, all students uh, that are gonna be operating a vehicle on campus parking here will need to register that vehicle. Um, and you can do that through Griffin's Lair. And once you register your vehicle, uh, you can come down to campus police offices located at 115 Administrative Annex next to the Greensburg Room. And um, we'll be able to issue that uh, parking permit. Now, once you pick up that permit, it's usually available the first week in August. So if you're uh, from the Greensburg area or you're an athlete and you're on campus early, you can always pick that up as soon as you get on the campus or you can stop up if you're in the area. Um, again, we're here 24 seven. So anytime after the first week in August, we will have those uh, parking permits available. Um, <clears throat> and you have to display that parking permit in your vehicle all the time at all times when you're on campus. So you wanna hang it with the number the parking permit number facing out. 
Um, and students can only park in designated areas. When you come down to pick up your permit, we're gonna go through the whole, uh, we have a big giant campus map and we're gonna show you everywhere you can park. Tell us where you live. We'll tell you where the closest places you wanna try for first to uh, get those great parking spots here on campus. Uh, the main thing you wanna avoid is uh, parking uh, in restricted areas, handicap, uh, fi near fire hydrants or in fire zones. Those are the big, uh, the big ticket items. On, if you get a ticket, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a big expense. So try not to park in those areas. Um, we'll also give you a parking map and some regulations. We don't need to go through what all the uh, the fines are and everything like that. But if you do receive a parking ticket, for the most part, they're usually twenty five dollars. There are some higher fines, um, and uh, if you don't pay them, they could be tacked onto your uh, university bill. If you do get a ticket and um, you would like to appeal it, there is certainly an appeals process and there's a link on Griffin's Lair where you can appeal your parking ticket and it will be reviewed and decided by the parking appeal board. Campus shuttles, very important. How do we get around? Um, shuttle service is provided during the traditional fall and spring semesters when classes are in session. The shuttle uh, schedule is always posted on Griffin's Lair under documents shuttle schedule. And it'll have a weekend and a weekday schedule on there. Um, so some of the places we go, like on the weekends, we offer a little bit extra as far as uh, you can go to Walmart on the shuttle or you can go to the mall, Westmoreland Mall, which is near here. If you just want to uh, do some minor shopping or get off campus and walk around the mall, maybe. Um, first student is our uh, service provider. Um, they have all the safety measures in place uh, currently with drivers wearing masks and regular cleaning on buses between routes. Um, should those uh, conditions change as we hopefully exit the pandemic, uh, those situations will change as well. And uh, I think that's it for me. Back to I Matt. I think that is it there. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, Michelle and all of our presenters. Um, we are going to hold tight here for one second. I know we're uh, we got to you know uh, going to get into Q and A here, but what I want to do real quick is I want to take a, a, a screenshot. So go ahead and if you had your camera off, unmute your camera, fix your hair, do whatever you need to do. We'll take take a nice little picture. I'm pulling everything up here so I can see everyone as many people as possible. I might have to take a few shots because there's a few screens that I have going on here but I'll go ahead and you can smile and we'll say three, two, and that's one screen. I got to go to the next screen. We've got so many awesome people here, beautiful faces, smiling Tetonians, all right. And you don't know if you're on the first screen or last screen, so you just got to keep on smiling. Three, two, one. Um, and oh, last group there, okay. We still got some more ready. Three, two, one. All right, and with that being said, due to time, I am going to let our presenters head out. So our presenters are going to leave us here. They're going to go off into their Q&A rooms. Um, students and families, hang tight. I have about two minutes of additional information about what's next. And we're going to let all our presenters get off into their Q&A rooms. But all of our presenters here, they'll be off in individual rooms. So if you have specific questions, you can ask them. I will address one of the questions that was brought up to me in the chat, which is a great one and easy one, easy enough one that I can answer. So the one question I got was about an involvement or club fair. So yes, we do have an involvement club fair. It normally happens within the first week or two of the semester. And so that'll be something that you'll be able to be a part of and find out about all of our clubs and organizations. There are also additional opportunities outside of clubs and, and organizations. There are a lot of work study positions that are available on campus to help you get connected to other um, departments and, and get some money. Uh, there's also other things that aren't necessarily clubs and organizations like becoming a resident assistant, a Griffin guide, an orientation leader. So I promise you that there's lots of opportunities that you'll learn about and we'll connect you with as soon as you get to campus. But I'd also advise you to attend, you know, future orientation sessions and, and uh, we'll go there. So give me a second here. I've got some more information about what's next. I'll go back to present mode and a few slides and we'll wrap up and send you off to your Q&A here. All right, so what is next? 
All right. So after this, yeah, like I said, many of our presenters will be in Q&A rooms and we're actually just going to do it until eight o'clock. And so if you can try and go off into rooms as you can, if you have questions that you were not able to get answered or one of your Q&A rooms, they left right away at eight o'clock, come back to me. I will be here probably until about 8.05, 8.10. So if you need anything, come back to me. I can always write down your answer or get you connected, uh, but definitely go off into those Q&A rooms. They will be there for the next 15, 20 minutes. Then um, I sent you the links in an email, but what I can also do here real quick is I will, in the chat, I will send a link that you can use to pull up a PDF document. And so if I open up the chat here and I send it to all of you, everyone in the chat, that should send you a link to a Google document with a PDF that has links to all of those Zoom rooms. So if you're just on your laptop or whatever, you can click that. Like I said, I will remain here and you can always find me at road to the hill at seatonhill.edu. Um, I will be with you all summer. We'll have lots of fun and many future sessions upcoming. So upcoming sessions, don't forget tomorrow from eight to nine o'clock, we have a Griffin gathering. We actually are gonna have one of those every month over the summer, uh, May, June, July, and August. It's a great way for you to get to meet other students and our orientation leaders facilitate that. Um, it'll be a different group of people every month. So come to all four of, the, four of them if you want to, to be able to mix and mingle and meet some of your fellow incoming classmates. I know it's difficult when we're not able to come together. So we wanted to give you these opportunities to meet people online and chat. Um, then our next one is an admissions counselor panel. If you have questions about all this process and getting ready uh, and, and officially all set up to become a Seton Hill student, admissions counselors will answer all your questions on Tuesday, June 1st. Then understanding financial aid. If you or your family members have questions about your financial aid packet, that'll be a session on Wednesday the 6th. And there's many more. Again, if you got the uh, mailer that we sent out last week, and if you haven't yet, if you didn't know what everyone was talking about, I promise you they're in the mail. But I also sent you, and I think I emailed you, oh, and you can't see it because it could sit in the background, but sent you a schedule there and you can always check the Road to the Hill website. Um, so with that, I do record the, most of the sessions and post them to the SHU Student Affairs YouTube channel. So follow uh, Seton Hill Student Affairs YouTube channel and you'll be able to see all of our recorded videos. Go to the road to the hill.seatonhill.edu website for any updates. And for those of you who didn't know, um, that we have a path and so we're calling it a path and that's where on the back of the handout we even have detailed your path here. But if you attend a certain number of sessions, we'll have extra shoe swag for you when you come to campus. So today already completes your shoe at a glance. You've already completed one fourth of your path attendance you attend two out of six of the uh, trivia nights or Griffin gatherings is the second part of your uh, path. The third part of your path is attending any two of the six panels that we have upcoming. So any type of group that you identify with, student athletes, student leaders, uh, first generation college student, commuters, transfers, our admissions counselor panel. Then if you attend three of 11 of what we're calling Setonia Success, all of our other presentations from different departments and groups so if you attend those uh, eight sessions out of the 28 that we have this summer, you'll have some extra shoe swag for you. We also always wanna encourage family members to attend as well. And with that being said, I've addressed everything I need to have. You are free to stick around here and ask me any questions if you want to. Otherwise go off to Q and A rooms, talk to some people and enjoy your night. Thank you everyone. And I should stop recording.